All right, so today we had another weekly Warriors Den live stream. And this week was, of course, the big year four season four reveal. And in it, we got to see what the new hero is all about, which heroes will be in the testing grounds. We saw the new weapons, the battle pass stuff, the big changes to the map breach, and of course, armor stuff. We've got a lot to talk about. So today I'm going to just try to summarize and deliver the information to you. And later on down the road, we'll do a more typical discussion type video on this stuff. So for now, I'll keep my points brief as I don't want this video to end up being 30 minutes long or anything like that. As always, if you do watch these videos somewhat regularly, I'd really appreciate it if you sub to the channel as it really helps me out. Now let's not waste any more time and get right into it. All right, so to start things off, let's begin with the new hero, Griffin. Griffin is a hero who technically is in the Knights faction, but has learned from heroes all over the land, not just their cultures and languages, but he's picked up a few moves from them as well. Yubi describes him as versatile and supportive, as well as old, and he's got a few things he can do. He's got a triple light chain with the finisher being undodgeable. He's got a triple heavy chain with the finisher having armor. He's got access to two different bashes, a bash from neutral, as well as a chain bash that guarantees a heavy. He's got side dodge heavies, a forward dodge light and heavy, and just like Kinsei, some attacks act as shortcuts to get to those finishers or to the kick, you know, stuff to progress through the chains more quickly. He's also got a sprint attack that acts like long arm, which is pretty neat. It is blockable and parryable though. After a parry, a single attack will be armored, which will help you to trade with external opponents or finish off weak opponents in front of you. As I said, He's picked up a few things from other heroes, so you'll see him using attacks from, you know, other heroes in the game like Highlander, Zhang Jun Zone, his sprint attack, and he'll even use voice lines from other heroes. So his forward dodge heavy, you'll hear him say Jinjoni Shobu from Kinsei, or for his dodge attack, he'll say a Zhang Hu voice line, stuff like that. So yeah, you'll see some stuff from other heroes, but as I said in the last video, we all knew this was coming. And now that we saw this reveal, I actually think it turned out well. Despite these things, he's still his own hero, and I prefer it to be this way if we know we're going to get stuff from other heroes. And honestly, I think it looks better than Warmonger did with like a Tiandi stance or the emote and you know, all that stuff. And if we can't get anything totally new, I think this is a good way of doing things. And even when he is doing things that, you know, are from other heroes, it doesn't look like it's ripped right from them. It looks like he's doing an interpretation of the move, which I thought was pretty cool. Now onto his feats, which are pretty interesting to say the least. His tier one is a damage debuff to a single target. It took a 30 damage heavy down to 23, which is around uh, 23, 24, 25% uh, damage reduction. His tier two is a healing feat. It heals Griffin and whatever teammate he is in range of. It doesn't heal for too much. From the clip, it looks like it heals around 20-ish HP or so. His tier three is a crossbow which if it connects with an opponent, it'll heal any teammate around the opponent in which the bolt hit. The bolt hits for 30 damage, but I didn't see how much it healed for. This looks like it's a pretty good tier three. And then his tier four is uh, really unique. It is a dual purpose feat. It's a throwable that once detonated will damage nearby enemies and leave a healing point for teammates. His set of feats is definitely unique and I can't wait to see how they'll affect the game, especially that tier three and four. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know I'm not a huge fan of how end games can go sometime, especially if both teams are breaking because of how you know chaotic things can get if multiple people have saved their tier fours. You can have like two fire flasks and umbral shelter, Phalanx, Oathbreaker, Stalwart Banner, Breakdance, and Yorms Tier 4. Just a ton of stuff going on at the same time. And I wonder how this will mix in with all of that. Anyways, he'll be available for purchase on December 10th and available for everyone to play on December 24th for 15,000 steel. Next up, we are finally getting another round of testing grounds. This time is to test out four different heroes and their changes. In the lineup this time around are four OG release date heroes, Warden, Peacekeeper, Nabushi, and Shigoki. And just like with Griffin, 
I'll go through the highlights with you guys, but I'll leave the blog post in the description if you're interested in reading things for yourself. Starting off with Warden, there are a few things going on with Warden. First up, Shoulder Bash. Warden can no longer access Shoulder Bash with a back dodge, and he no longer does those extra little steps forward after canceling a fully charged Shoulder Bash. On top of these changes, however, is a pretty big one. Each of Warden's attacks, except for Shoulder Bash, can now chain into a Shoulder Bash. So anytime Warden uses his sword in an attack, he can Shoulder Bash. Anytime, even after a finisher. So Valiant Breakthrough, a heavy attack, light attack, zone attack, heavy finisher. After any of these, he can do a shoulder bash. And on top of all this, all of his heavy finishers are now unblockable and 900 milliseconds, not just the top. So the side heavy finishers are also unblockable and 900 milliseconds. His opener side heavies now have flatter trajectories and his zone recovery is now 500 milliseconds instead of 1000. Someone joked that Warden is going to be permanently orange and I've been thinking about that all day. Again, these changes are for the testing grounds and everything tested does not necessarily mean that they'll end up in the live game whenever the changes are ready to roll. But I think Warden fans are pretty happy right now. They've got a lot to chew over and come the 10th, they'll have a lot to play with. Next up, Peacekeeper players also have some stuff to be happy about. All of her heavy attacks now deal an extra 5 damage. Bleed has not changed, meaning that Peacekeeper does quite a bit of damage across the board, at least higher than average. Yubi is doubling down on her synergy with Bleed, so on top of the enhanced lights on the bleeding target, all of her heavy finishers and the second part of her zone attack will now be unblockable. So now Peacekeeper can really get people moving around if she manages to get them to bleed or if a Shaman or Nabushi manages to get them bleeding for her. I'm looking forward to playing PK because now her opponents will need to worry about the unblockable, a faint in a guard break, a soft faint in a guard break, a dagger cancel, or just nothing while she tries to deflect your option select to apply bleed. Speaking of deflex, they changed her deflect follow up input to heavy instead of light. Her zone attack is now enhanced and gives a heavy parry when parried, and the second part of her zone is now soft faintable into a guard break or a dodge. Now onto the samurai, Nabushi is receiving a few changes that aren't as exciting as the Peacekeeper Warden changes but should make her a bit better. Hidden Stance will now cost 12 stamina instead of 24. Heavy finishers and heavies from Hidden Stance are now undodgeable. This should help out with her kick. Her zone attacks first part now cost 20 stamina and the second hit can now be soft fainted into a kick heavy finisher or dodge. Speaking of dodges, her Cobra Strike and Sidewinder both chain into heavy finishers. These should help Nabushi's offense flow a bit and hopefully these changes are enough to you know get me to finally play Nabushi. I've wanted to play Nabushi for a long time so hopefully this is the push that she needs. Lastly we've got Shigoki who has been the subject of discussion for many since the Warriors Den. So Shigoki now has two more options. He has a dodge forward heavy to catch back rollers effectively and he's got a side dodge bash which is just his headbutt but done after a side dodge. This was added to help him deal with opponents who have a bash of their own. But at the cost of these two tools he no longer has hyper armor on his lights and he no longer has armor on his demons embrace. I'll talk about these more when I do my discussion video, but Shigoki is going to be played against a bit differently. Anyways, those are the four heroes that are the highlights of the testing grounds. This round of testing grounds will start at the beginning of the season, so on the 10th, and will go on for one week until the 17th, which is when another event in For Honor begins. So after we spend some time with them, feel free to let your voices be heard. Yubi also plans on sending out a survey to us that we can fill out. I don't see all of these changes seeing the light of the main game, but we'll see. Okay, now quickly on to the other stuff. Beachhead is the map that got improved this time. It's really been changed up. I won't go over everything, but it's like a map rework. The new entryways and the home points, the drops on B have been replaced by a bridge connecting the two sides of the map above B, leading into an area that was previously inaccessible. The spikes have been removed from the spiky point and the lighting has been changed. I actually cannot wait to play on this map. It looks really great and hopefully Forge is the map for next season. 
We also saw that Shaman is the hero that received a new set of armor, and I actually really dig this armor set, if I'm going to be honest with you. We finally see Shaman with a full head of hair, rather than the buzz sides, and she's wearing a new outfit. A bunch of other heroes also received new variations, not sets, of armor, as well as new headpieces and whatnot, except for the year one DLC heroes. I am assuming that their new sets are still in the works. Uh, Highlander mains, hang in there. Speaking of new armors, they did mention that we could be seeing more armor for Griffin come title update 2, which is what we typically call the mid-season patch. We got to see the new battle pass and the stuff that comes in it. Nothing too out of the ordinary. This time the theme is steampunk, and I actually really like the weapons and the effect that is included. I'm not sure if this will be the next battle pass I buy, as I've passed up on the last two. And lastly, we got a new set of finishers that are in the game right now. Not hero specific ones, but hey, there's something. I actually like the one where they get punted away. And that was pretty much it, at least, you know, the big stuff. This den was actually pretty long, and as I said at the beginning, there's a lot to chew on until next week, so I'll probably do a discussion video, probably on Saturday or Sunday, who knows. Anyways, that's all I've got for the video. As always, I do want to know what you guys think, so be sure to talk to me down in the comments about anything we talked about in this video. And as always, if you like the video, feel free to leave a like and sub if you're new, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.